Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we will be discussing about the common knee pathologies that we can detect on ultrasound. So we can uh, divide knee in four compartments and first we will be discussing about the extensor compartment. So the most common pathology that we uh, get in extensor compartment, among the most common pathologies is the pre-particular bursitis which is uh, basically distension of uh, the adventitial bursa, which is located in the subcutaneous plane anterior to patella and the patellar tendon. So as we can see here, these are the two still images which are showing distension of uh, pre-patellar bursa surrounded by uh, you know thickening and there is increased vascularity. And in this video, we can see distension of the pre-patellar bursa leading to pre-patellar bursitis. So it is because of constant friction in this region, which leads to distension of this bursa. Next is suprapatellar joint recess. So uh, basically when there is joint effusion, it accumulates in the suprapatellar joint recess and uh, the ecogenicity of the joint fluid, it is affected by the uh, pathology that is affecting the joint. So it can be eco-free like in this case where uh, fluid is completely eco-free, but there is synovial thickening and this is hyperechoic, the synovial thickening is quite hyperechoic, suggestive of chronic synovitis. Fluid can be, uh, you know, complex and there can be septic with presence of soft tissue. There can be presence of crystals and uh, loose bodies within the suprapatellar joint recess. In this case, we can see there is a presence of synovial thickening, effusion and enhancement. Plus there are presence of, you know, uh, lymph nodes in the popliteal region. And uh, this is the still ultrasound image where we can see surrounding synovial thickening plus presence of effusion. And in this ultrasound video of the popliteal region where we can see presence of enlarged lymph nodes. So this was a case of infective arthritis of the knee joint, particularly uh, tuberculosis in this case. We can also see presence of lipohemarthrosis uh, on ultrasound where fat is, the, is lighter than fluid and blood. So it uh, floats uh, in the anterior part non-dependent region, then comes the fluid and then comes the blood. So this is lipohemarthrosis, which develops when there is fracture, which communicates with the articular surface. Next is jumper's knee, uh, which is focal tendinosis of the proximal patella tendon. It is seen in athletes who are involved in uh, jumping activities. So here we can see proximal patella tendon is thickened and hypoechoic with presence of vascularity. So this is jumper's knee. Similarly, we can see quadriceps tendinosis, which is uh, tendinosis or inflammation of the uh, quadriceps attachment over patella, where we can see hypoechoic tendon with presence of, with or without presence of any calcific foci. Then we can evaluate medial and lateral compartment. Next. We can see, you know, ganglion cyst and paramenescal cyst in the lateral and medial compartment. So ganglion cyst can occur anywhere uh, with, with or without any communication with the joint capsule. And uh, uh, when these cysts are seen in relation to the menisci uh, with association with any horizontal meniscal tear, it is paramenescal cyst. Like in this case, there is complex cyst uh, in relation to the, you know, medial femoral condyle which is away from menisca in this case. So this is ganglion cyst. Next is iliotibial band friction syndrome. So we can see iliotibial band is a, a, a lateral structure which attaches over the Gerdes tubercle of tibia. And uh, if there is any friction between this iliotibial uh, band and the lateral femoral condyle, uh, it leads to presence of fluid and edema between the band and the lateral femoral condyle. So it occurs in runners and cyclists who are involved in constant, you know, flexion extension of the knee joint. So in this video, we can see presence of uh, fluid deep to the iliotibial band between iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle. We can inject a steroid in and around the uh, surrounding in the surrounding region of the iliotibial band to relieve the symptoms. Next is meniscal extrusion and osteophytes. So uh, these are basically indicator of uh, degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis which very commonly affects the knee joint. So we can see, you know, large osteophytes along the articular surface and presence of, you know, meniscal extrusion, which are indirect indicator of uh, loss of joint space. 
Next, moving to the posterior compartment where we can find one of the most common pathologies around the knee joint, that is Baker's cyst, which is distension of uh, the bursa between the tendons of semimembranosus and the medial head of gastronemius. So it gives a sign which is known as speech bubble sign. So here we can see this speech bubble kind of thing between the tendons of uh, you know med uh, semimembranosus and medial head of gastronemius. And in this video, again, we can see presence of Baker cyst. Baker cyst uh, can be eco-free or it can be filled with synovial thickening, like in this case of rheumatoid arthritis, where there's exuberant synovial thickening, formation of large panus, which is distending the Baker cyst. So here we can see there is uh, synovial thickening filling the uh, Baker cyst. And in this, you know, uh, panoramic uh, image where we can see it is extending from distal thigh up to the mid calf. Next, what we can uh, encounter is rupture of Baker cyst where patient can present with severe calf pain and swelling. So here we can see in this video, this Baker cyst is ruptured into the subcutaneous uh, plane and the intermuscular plane. And uh, this can mimic, you know, deep venous thrombosis clinically. Next, we can find loose bodies within the Baker cyst, which may be an indicator of synovial osteochondromatosis. Sometimes we may encounter ganglion cyst uh, in the posterior compartment or in the popliteal region, which may have relationship with the posterior cruciate ligament, like in this case. So this is posterior cruciate ligament and there is a ganglion cyst in relation to it. Next, we can encounter neoplastic lesions around the knee joint. Like in this case, there is large lipoma in the prepatellar region, which is hyperechoic. In this 12-year-old male, you can see there is a large lesion which is uh, seen in the posterior part of the distal uh, femur and leading up to the popliteal region. And this lesion was actually encasing the uh, sciatic and tibial nerve. And here also we can see this nerve is completely encased. On ultrasound-guided biopsy, it came out to be nerve-shaped tumor. This is another case of 18-year-old male where there was a mass in the popliteal region and it was splaying the nerve fascicles of the tibial nerve and tibial nerve was seen entering and exiting from the lesion. So we thought it is nerve sheet tumor, but on histopathology it turned out to be synovial sarcoma. So uh, synovial sarcoma can be encountered around the knee joint and the knee is quite frequently affected by synovial sarcoma uh, as compared to the other joints. This is another case of uh, nerve sheet tumor in a case of neurofibromatosis uh, type 1 where we can find a large uh, nerve sheet tumor along the course of sciatic nerve, which is also thickened bilaterally. This is ultrasound image with internal vascularity. So this is a case of peripheral nerve sheet tumor. So these are all common pathologies that we can detect on ultrasound in the region of knee. So this is the end of the video. Thank you so much.